welcome today guys to another video and in today's video I will be showing you uh, telling you everything the basics of bedrock condition PvP um, this will be a useful for tip for beginners but if you're advanced already I'm sure there'll be some stuff useful for you in today's video really quick this is a four section video there will be timestamps in the description if you're wanting to jump around to into the around the video but other than that let's get started because we have a lot to cover so first uh, is the basics um, for combos, basically. So for the basics of combos, to like without getting like into the super heavy details yet, is strafing. Literally, you just strafe back and forth, and so it makes it mess up their aim while you're aiming at them. So that way you can get consecutive hits. Uh, but I will get onto uh, like sprint resetting. Uh, but like basically, uh, it's like where you reset your sprint with uh, W that's called W tapping so like every single hit you would uh, reset your sprint so it would look like this see now there that would be keep them farther away so you can get more consecutive hits on them so you can combo them so that is the absolute basics to combos now for section two uh, so for the first tip uh, is hot game if you don't know what that is uh, it's basically where uh, you have selected uh, hotbar slots in your hotbar, so this could be usually done on like keyboard and mouse or something that has like hotkeys. Preferably, it's always keyboard and mouse because you have a lot of buttons. But basically, I am tapping buttons on my keyboard to uh, hotkey to those slots, and so that way, if I'm fighting, I can shift, I can um, hotkey to a projectile or something to get them up in the air which I will get to in a second. The next tip we will get we will be going over covering is uh, sprint resetting. So if you don't know what that is it's basically uh, why it's called that is because your first hit will always do the most amount of knockback. It will always do the most. So then to do that you will um, want to let go of W. That's why it's called W tapping. Is you let go of your w key for sprinting so then you stop like this so then you can hit and then you press down as almost it didn't you never even notice so it looks like this as you can see i launched that guy off into the void off of the sumo platform so uh, uh, it's extremely overpowered um but and then there's a few other ver uh, methods of doing that. Another method is S tapping. Uh, it is still effective, but not as effective. But it can be used in certain occasions. Again, it's like stopping your sprint. Uh, I don't use it as much. I prefer W tapping much more. It's a lot more effective and promising. It it works like guaranteed. I mean, all those those are like basically the main two uh, sprint resetting methods. Uh, the the, yeah, those are the two, but those are the main two uh, sprinting uh, resetting methods. Next, uh, next on to section three. The next tip I will be showing you is aim. Uh, this is probably the most obvious. This is probably the most obvious one. Um, but basically, what you can help with practicing this is building a little contraption like this. Um, I just decorated the floor, but you can uh, build a little contraption like this. It's really, really simple. Um, just so that the, like, whatever it is, I'm going to use a zombie or whatever, like a pigman or whatever you want to use, but basically you can, like, maybe hold the weapon or something and just practice going like this, keeping your crosshair always on there, on your target, staying in, like, strafing back and forth like this, and it can improve your aim, and over the course of time, you'll get better. Uh, this is a really good pra uh, way to practice. Another way to help improve your aim is crosshairs, uh, uh, but uh, like using like a texture pack, uh, you can change like the crosshair and stuff, uh, that, or using like a client that has the ability like to change the crosshair. But other than that, there. But other than that, there's not really uh, much of a way to do that. The next tip is. Um, reach uh, basically so basically if you didn't know if your opponent is higher than you you'll have more reach than them if you are higher than them they will have more reach than you so 
that's something to just always keep in mind. So if you're making the mistake of jumping around sporadically like, like, uh, like this, just absolutely just going ham with the jumping, then there's a very strong chance that once they hit you, you're gonna go flying. Because when you're in the air, you have less momentum. Uh, I'll get onto momentum in a much greater detail in just a second, but basically how it works is when you are moving forward, obviously that's momentum. That's how the entire game is played. That is how combo works. Whoever has more momentum is going to combo. So like if like we first if I were in the air and he was walk and he was sprint jumping, then while I'm in the air, he can W tap me to oblivion because I'm not on the ground, which means he has the low ground advantage and he can uh, so that means he can keep me in a combo and start it a lot easier. So once your opponent's in the air, try to keep it that way, uh, because then it will be a lot easier to hold combos. Now for section four. Now time for section four. So first up is I'll be covering uh, some extra t uh, things that can uh, be useful for PvP. I already covered a little bit about this, but texture packs can change like the entire looks of the game. They can change your inventory, chests, like the inside of chests, they can change a whole bunch of things. Not just blocks and items and stuff and crossers, you can even change the hotbar so it looks unique. There, there are really, really nice, uh, and in case you missed it, you can also change the crosshair too, the clouds, the sky, the sun, the moon, you na basically. You can change basically everything with a texture pack. It's super overpowered. Next, uh, we have the ranged items. These are mainly what you'll be using. Well, like if you're playing on a server, these are mainly what you'll be uh, using. Like Cubecraft, I know, has crossbows. Uh, Hive has bows, and Cubecraft has bows and crossbows. They also have tridents. Uh, Hive doesn't. Uh, and then they don't have fishing rods in either of them. They have snowballs in Hive and Cubecraft, and Cubecraft has eggs. Um, but one thing I do want to go over, this is really important. Some servers cha can change the um, gameplay. So like, for instance, Hive, they have less reach, but their snowballs do more knockback, and their bows too. So they do more knockback, and they do more up knockback. So that's why when you're on Hive, that's like the PvP is totally different from like, you know, they also disabled like W. T they can also like disable like crits and uh, d like W tapping and stuff. I don't know how they do it, but it can be done. Uh, just uh, as just so you know. Uh, Next is bridging. I will have a custom bridging tutorial uh, released soon for Bedrock Edition. But if I just quick bridge up here, I just want to give over the quick uh, thing is an edge place. That's why you see people just like, uh, like as soon as if I bridge like a little platform here, they can go like this, uh, or like, um, or even this really creepy but this can be done I know it's kind of weird but I will have a custom bridging tutorial on how to bridge on bedrock edition this separates the features from this basically um, but this basically separates Java from bedrock is the bridging mechanics uh, next is netherite PvP I won't go into this in too much this is mainly for only like SMPs but it's PvP is different uh, if you're ever playing it. It's just a little bit different because you have take less knockback and you take less damage and stuff. Just so you know, if you watch like Java YouTubers like uh, Dream or something, you cannot disable shields with axes. Okay? It is not possible to do so. Wood through netherite, you cannot. Just so you know. And you have to shift to activate your shield. Next is crystal PvP. This is mainly done on Java, but it is it can be done on Bedrock. 
this is an extremely like advanced form of PvP. It's extremely overpowered, but it's pretty hard to learn and it involves a lot of hotkeying. So I suggest uh, you wait until you're better at PvP, like the beginnings of like sword and stuff, before you move into crystal. Uh, last, these are like probably like items that you'll be getting in like servers or games you have, like Ender Pearls. These are like extra things that you'll be like having potions, slash potions, maybe. Uh, maybe ladders or anything, clutching items and stuff like that. You'll be rarely getting anvils, but you sometimes can, so you can probably, like, uh, not clutch with them, but, like, maybe, like, secretly try to do some stuff with them, but uh, those are basically all the things that you can use for PvP. Uh, but, unfortunately, ladies and gents, uh, that is all I've got time for today. Uh, really quick, this isn't everything about this is just the extreme basics and the import like the super important basic stuff uh but if you want a, a second a second part let me know and i'll give you one i also have a bridging tutorial and a java tutorial for pvp coming really soon uh but otherwise i really hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next video and really quick please consider subscribing